Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at an application problem using quadratic equations. So here is our question, or our statement basically. We're going to answer quite a few questions about it. A ball is thrown vertically upward. After t seconds, its height in feet is given by the following function. Notice it's a function where h represents the height, and it equals negative 16 t squared plus 96 t plus 6. And so t is our input, which is time, and our output is height in feet. So let's answer part a. What is the height from which the ball is thrown, or the initial height? Okay, so think about this initially. If I'm about to throw a ball up in the air, well, when does time start? It starts as soon as I release my hand, release the ball. And so this question, we have to translate this, it's actually saying when time is zero. So when time is zero, what is h? Is really what this is saying to do. So we're going to go into our function for height, and everywhere there's a t, we are going to plug in zero, because that's initially what um, the height is going to be. So plug in zero, and then if we simplify, notice this term is zero plus zero, and then plus six. So the initial height, and you can write this in words if you want to since it is a word problem, but the initial height, the ball is thrown from six feet. Okay, so the next part says, how long does it take for the ball to reach its highest point? This one's gonna require just a little bit more work. And it also goes into part C, what that's asking. So what I'm gonna have to do here, because it wants its highest point, if you think about the shape, if you were to throw something up, it goes up and then it falls down, okay? This is actually a parabola. And so what we're really looking for here is this highest point, which is the vertex. So we are trying to find the vertex of a parabola. And in order to do that, we have to find the vertex of this function. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use completing the square. So I'm gonna take my original function and in order to complete the square, I have to factor out any leading coefficient. So I'm going to factor out the negative 16, and I have a t squared. The next term, if you recall, it was 96 plus 96. So if I divide that by negative 16, I actually get a minus 6t. And now I am going to complete the square, so I'm going to leave a blank space, because I'm going to add the missing piece for completing the square. And then in the very back, we had a plus 6 in our equation. Now, because I'm going to add something that was never there, in order to keep this equation the same or function the same, I have to take that thing back away. Okay, so let's find the missing piece. Anytime you do completing the square, the missing piece is always half of the middle term squared. And so half of this coefficient on the middle term squared. So negative 6 divided by 2 squared. So this is negative 3 squared, which is 9. So that is the missing piece. Now, I have to take that back away just to make the function equal what it used to, but I do want to mention something here. You have to be careful because even though I added a plus 9 that was never there, this minus 16 in the front is actually making this a way bigger number than just regular 9. It's actually going to be negative 16 times 9. So when I take away this amount that was never in the equation to begin with, it's really um, negative 144. So I have to take that away because that's something that was never there when I added that plus 9. So you multiply this coefficient times the 9, and that's where this minus 144 came from. All right, so that's the hard part finding out what do I add for completing the square and making sure that you subtract that same amount. And then now the nice part is once you've completed the square, this trinomial here always factors very nicely as something squared. That's the whole point of completing the square. And so this factors as t minus 3 quantity squared. And then we bring down what was in the front, our negative 16. And then in the back, let's put these two terms together. This is going to be plus 150. Okay, so this is our new function uh, for height, just rewritten. I'm just going to go ahead and box this in. But now that we have this, we can tell really quickly the vertex of this function. 
So then the vertex here, just by looking, it's going to be h comma k. And so the highest point on our parabola is going to be 3 comma 150. And just note, um, whatever number is after the minus sign over here, so that's the x value, or in this case, our time value. So I don't include the minus sign. It's a positive 3. So now all of that work was just to be able to get us to how to answer this question. How long does it take for the ball to reach its highest point? Well, this ordered pair, the input is time and the output is height. So it takes 3 seconds to get to the highest point. So when t equals 3 seconds, the ball has reached its high point. Part C says, well, what is the maximum height that the ball will go? We already did all the hard work. It's this y value right here from the vertex, okay? And so the maximum height, so I'll just write it as max height, max h, is 150, and we were told our units are feet here. Okay, so maximum height. Okay, so now let's take a look at part D. When will the ball hit the ground? So we have to translate this into an equation that we can solve. The ball would hit the ground when the height is how high? Well, zero. Okay, so we had a function for height, and where there's an h, we're going to say zero, because if the height is zero, the function is on the ground. So we had this original function that represented our height, and then we want to solve this for t, because if it says when, that's a question about time. So what is the time when the ball's on the ground? And so you have some options here. We can use the quadratic formula, or we can try to factor. Um, we can do the completing the square, which we already did. So I'm actually going to do that. So or let's just go with the version we already worked so hard to get. Zero is our height now, equals negative 16 times t minus 3 quantity squared plus 150. So we're going to solve this using our square root property. So I'm going to go ahead and move over this 150 by subtracting on both sides. And then I'm going to end up dividing out the negative 16. So we have negative 150 equals negative 16 times t minus 3 squared. And then I'll move it over in just a second, but I'm going to divide this negative 16 on both sides. Okay, and so let's see what we get. If we simplify that, on the left side we have two negatives right here being divided, so that turns positive. And if you just reduce 150 and 16, if you divide by 2, you're going to get 75 over 8. And that equals t minus 3 squared. And so using our square root property, we can take the square root of both sides, and then don't forget, on the side with the number, put your plus and minus. So we just have t minus 3 now. We just undid the square. And on the left side, I could reduce this radical, but I'm going to go ahead and just go right into my calculator after this next step, because um, we just want to get an estimate for time. So I'm just going to add 3 to both sides to get t. And then we have t is equal to 3 plus and minus. Let me get that minus on there. Square root 75 over 8. And then if you use your calculator here, you're going to get two numbers, one with the plus sign and one with the minus sign. And you're going to get approximately 6.06 .06 seconds. And the other answer you're going to get is actually negative. And because this is an application problem, you get to dismiss this. Because in this case, I'm not going to throw the ball up after some negative time has passed. It doesn't make any sense. So I get to dismiss this. So we can say that at about 6.6 .6 seconds, the ball would hit the ground. Okay, let's do this last part. At what times will the ball reach 86 feet? So notice the question, what times? We are looking for t, and we know about the height. So the height is given to us as 86, and we're going to fill that in to our function. So we can use either version of our equation. I'm going to go back to the original. So 86 is the height, and we want to know about time. So negative 16t squared plus 
t plus 6, and we're solving for t, okay, because we're looking for what times. All right, now this is another quadratic equation. We solved one word equals 0. Now we're solving one word equals 86, but we want it to equal 0 in order to solve. So my very first step, I'm going to go ahead and bring this 86 over to the other side by subtracting. And so we get 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 96t minus 80. Now, again, you have options. You could use your quadratic formula. You could use completing the square or try to factor. I'm going to factor this one. To make things easier, because there is a number over here, because this equals a number, you can actually divide by a common factor if it goes into all the terms. And negative 16 actually goes into all of our terms here. Now, just be aware, you can only do this if it equals a number. If it equals f of x, that's not a number. That's a function. And so we have 0 on the left, t squared on the right, minus 6t plus 5. And this is much a much nicer version to work with. And this one actually factors really well, really quickly. We can factor this as t minus 5 times t minus 1. And if you want to check, you can FOIL that back out and you'll get exactly where we just had. And so you set each factor to 0, t minus 5 equals 0, and then t minus 1 equals 0. And you'll find that your times, let me just move up here, would equal 5 seconds and also 1 second. Okay, so both of these are the answer. And let me just quickly draw a small parabola for you for it to make sense why there's two two answers. If you think about the graph of a parabola, it has the same height twice. Put that right here because we started at six feet for the height, uh, x and y axis here. So we were told to find when the height is 86. So somewhere up here we had 86 feet and notice we had that height on the way up with the ball going up and then on the way back down it was 86 feet again. Okay, so that is an application for quadratic equations.